the process of walking is what we call gait and uh, we started looking at this uh, in the last class and we saw that if you look at the legs they alternately get into what is known as the stance phase where they are in contact with the ground and the swing phase where they move through the air and then make contact again with the ground. So, they are not in contact. So, they alternate between these roles. So, in the stance phase there is a supporting role that they perform. In the swing phase you have forward progression. So, there is forward progression in stance as well the body is moving, but essentially if you look at the leg, the leg is doing a supporting function during stance and then moving forward during swing. One gait cycle is defined as typically from one event to the same event happening with the same leg. It is the time between one event and the same event between and, and the most common event that is taken is what is known as heel strike, heel contact or some books prefer to use initial contact because not everybody may walk with by striking the heel first. Okay. In some forms of gait the toe may hit the ground first and then. Uh, so, the preferred term is initial contact. Okay. So, initial gait cycle is initial contact to initial contact of the same foot. And this period between initial contact and lifting the front part of the foot, lifting off the front part of the foot or lifting off the foot from the ground. is known as the stance phase and from the time the foot is lifted to again you know we say initial contact because it is a repetitive um, event actually it is the final contact now right initial to, to end the gait cycle to initial contact of that foot is your swing face. This is actually start to end of the gait cycle, but we still call it initial contact because it starts the next gait cycle. So, what we will be looking at more closely is the coordination between the various segments of the lower limbs, because you have the uh, thigh shank and foot of one leg, thigh shank and foot of the other leg and the pel con pelvis connecting the two and it is the coordinated movements of these limbs. Okay, that is causing the walking to happen, that is causing the gait. So, this right now we are just looking at one portion, you know, one leg. If you look at it, if you look at the leg for some period, it is in contact with the ground, for some period in the gait cycle, it is off the ground. So, now if you look at it in terms of both the legs, okay, what you will find is initially so when one foot makes initial contact 
with the ground, the other foot is still in contact with the ground. Okay. So, during walking, during a gait cycle, there are periods where both limbs are in contact with the ground and that is called the double support phase. In fact, the existence of a double support phase is what distinguishes walking from running. So, as you walk faster and faster, the periods of double support start shrinking and when double support goes to 0, then you say that now you are running. Okay. So, the existence of a double support phase is what distinguishes walking from running. In running, you may have both feet off the ground for a short period that is called the flight phase. Okay. But anyway. So, when one limb is in, when either limb is in contact with the ground, we call that the single support phase. And the single support phase is very critical for stability. Okay, stability during the single support phase is a very critical aspect of walking and as we go through this, we will see how the muscles coordinate to ensure stability uh, in the single support phase because you are supporting the entire body weight using a single limb and a very reduced support base, base of support. So, uh, maintaining stability during the single support phase is a very critical aspect of uh, bipedal walking. If you look at quadrupedal walking like a lot of animals do, right? at any point of time you may have three limbs in contact with the ground and that gives you the tripod stability. In uh, many four legged animals you have the tripod stability. So, even if one limb is off the ground, it is still stable. In bipedal walking like the way we humans walk that we, we do not have that. Okay. So, support in the um, single support phase is very critical, stability during that phase is very critical. Okay. So, so if you look at the gait cycle, you will have an initial period of double support or double limb stance. So, both the limbs are in their stance phases. Okay. So, remember with respect to the limbs, we talk about them being in stance or swing. With respect to the ground, we talk about it in terms of it being double support or single support. So, initially both the limbs are in stance, that is your double support phase. Then uh, say we are looking at the right leg, the green one. So, here it starts off with where, when it first contacts the ground, the other limb is also on the uh, ground. So, you have a double support phase. Then after a while, the other limb has lifted off the ground that is moved into swing. So, now this limb is taking on the entire supporting function. Then after a point the other limb swings through, the blue limb swings through and again makes contact with the ground. So, now you have this limb has still not left the ground. So, you have again another, so this is double support 1, double support 2. It starts off with, so if you are looking at the gait cycle, it starts off with a double support phase. Then you have, this is a single support phase you have another phase of double support. Now, the other limb once that makes contact, this one lifts off that assumes the supporting function, the single support function. So, this is single support 2 and this is for the, this is the basically the stance of the left limb and then now the right limb swings forward and makes contact again. So, this 
once it makes contact that ends the gate cycle. So, gate cycle is this from here to this is one gate cycle. So, one gate cycle has two periods of double support and two periods of single support and the approximate proportion is you have 10 percent, 40 percent, 10 percent, 40 percent. Okay. If you look at it in terms of the stance and swing each limb is in stance for how much? 2 double supports 60 percent and it swing it is in swing for 40 percent of the. So, if you look at the foot the distance between when one foot makes contact with the ground and then the other foot makes contact with the ground that is called one step that is one step okay. and a stride is also the gait cycle because that is from the point of contact to the point of contact of the same foot. So, in one gait cycle the distance you cover is a stride. Okay, sometimes gait cycle is also referred to as a stride. The swinging limb is what determines. So, in a what is known as a normal gait cycle. So, we use the term normal just as sort of a to capture I would say the most uh, commonly observed set of data okay. because normal is again like you know like you have with say um, you know medical cholesterol levels or blood pressure everything a lot of this depends on age it depends on gender it depends on other factors as well. Okay. But when we talk about a normal gait cycle we are talking about uh, a large percentage you know if you take a certain age group of individuals you will observe a similar pattern. So, that pattern when you conform to that pattern we call it a normal gait cycle and something that deviates from that pattern is what we call abnormal or pathological gait. It may be perfectly fine. So, what is normal for somebody may not be normal for someone else and they may still be able to walk efficiently or do what they need to do efficiently. But for practical purposes we call this as a normal gait cycle. So, in a normal gait cycle you have two symmetric steps. So, there is really no difference between your right step and, and this step where the light right leg swings through and makes contact. So, this is known as this is the right step and this is your left step here that is your left step length. So, in some forms of pathological gait you may find that the right step will not equal the left step. The right step plus the left step will be one stride, but you may have some kind of asymmetry. So, normal gait cycle is a symmetric gait cycle and you have two symmetric steps here. Now, let us look at the gait cycle in more detail. So, you have if you look at a stride or a gait cycle you have the stance and the swing periods. Okay. If you look at the limb you have the stance and you have the limb and they have different functions to perform in each of the um, two periods. So, if you look at stance the primary function initially when the foot makes contact when that limb makes contact with the ground what you are trying to do is shift 
the weight from one leg to the other. So, the initial task of the limb that makes when it starts in the stance phase is for it to basically accept that weight and start taking over the support function. Okay. That is called weight acceptance and then now after, after this weight is accepted by this limb, the other limb leaves the ground okay. and so now this stance limb has to perform the function of single support. So, it has to take over the supporting function while still maintaining the forward progression. So, you do not just you do not just say okay, I will take over the single support and just stand there you are still you still have to continue to move because that is the function of uh, the walking. Okay. So, that is the primary function. So, you first accept the weight because you you have a swinging leg that just makes contact with the ground starts taking the uh, weight of the body and then supports it solely for a certain period of time. Then when that limb goes into swing, so when it is done with the single support and towards the end of its single support, now the other leg has started accepting the weight that is your second double support phase. Okay. The other leg now has made contact with the ground and has started accepting the uh, weight and then this limb now prepares for prepares to leave the ground and move forward. So, that is called limb advancement because essentially what you are doing is you uh, strike the ground this one lifts off moves forward strikes the ground then this one lifts off moves forward strikes the ground. So, you have this alternating pattern of the leg being in stance and uh, swing. So, now in this we will look at some of the phases in more detail. Okay. So, let us look at those aspects of gait. So, we will we'll start defining each of these. So, initial contact. So, here is a gait cycle. Okay. Start off with I am looking at the the green limb okay so that is my limb of interest i am looking at a gait cycle when it makes initial contact to initial contact of the same limb so this is one gait cycle that i am looking at so initial contact is the moment the foot strikes the ground so if you look at the stance phase it is divided into initial contact loading response so there are various phases of stance initial contact is a is more like an event it is not so much of a phase it is there the others are like phases. So, there is a time period over which that happens. So, this is an then you have what is known as loading response mid stance terminal stance and pre swing and we will look at each of these uh, in the next slide. And then you have the swing is divided into pre swing sort of overlaps both stance it is it is the uh, period between the end of stance and the beginning of swing. Then the swing phase itself is divided into three initial swing, mid swing and terminal swing. So, let us look at some of these. So, first we look at the events. So, you have initial contact okay, the moment that the foot strikes the ground. Then the next event that you can look at is opposite toe. So, initial contact is typically abbreviated as IC. 
opposite toe off this is followed by so initial contact is followed by opposite toe off so it is o t o okay and that happens when you can see the blue leg is now lifting off the ground so you have the green leg which is the leg you are looking at and then the other leg is your blue leg the moment the other foot it is also called the contralateral foot. So, the contralateral implies it is the one that is other than the one of interest. Okay. So, you have these two biomechanical terms ipsilateral and contra the other lateral foot. So, here the ipsilateral leg is my right leg because I am looking at forward progression in this direction and the contralateral leg would be the left. So, the moment the contralateral foot lifts off the ground. So, that is my opposite toe off. Then the green leg which is in stance. Now, you observe that the heel of that foot starts to rise. Okay. You have heel rise, where you see you know as the term implies the heel of the stance leg or heel of the single support leg lifts off the ground because now you are in single support anyway. So, if you look at the green you have it making contact okay. then you have the entire foot in contact with the ground okay. because what happens is after you contact the heel your foot actually plantar flexes and makes contact with the ground fully. Okay. You strike and then your foot goes flat that is called foot flat and that happens before the opposite toe off because that is how you are accepting the weight. Okay. You take you strike then you create your base of support. Okay, and then the other leg starts to lift off the ground. So, you have and after foot flat now this the limb moves forward and slowly now the heel starts lifting off the ground that is your heel rise. So, actually opposite before opposite toe off foot flat happens. So, the heel first rises and then as the heel is rising because that means now that foot is the support foot is being unloaded right because you have less and less contact. So, you are now preparing for the other foot to make initial contact the other foot makes initial contact. So, that is your OIC opposite initial contact heel rise O T O I C. Okay. So, now this indicates that you have from heel contact of this foot now you have opposite initial contact or opposite heel contact. So, that is one step okay. I am done with about 50 percent of my gait cycle. Okay. Now, the other limb is sort of doing the same thing that this limb did in the first half. Okay. It starts it undergoes foot flat and then 
you know slowly it will start the body will move over that limb and then the heel will start rising on that other. In the meantime while that is doing that okay, this leg okay, you had the heel off now the toe leaves the ground of this leg, the leg that was doing the supporting. The green leg the toe leaves the ground that is the leg of interest. So, you have the toe off of this leg. Now, when it is swinging, so it lifts up like this, it swings up and then starts moving down aided by gravity as well as some uh, uh, muscle control, but mainly it starts moving down. So, there is a certain time where the other limb is performing the supporting function, this thing has swung up and then starts swinging forward. So, the two feet are now adjacent. So, this is your feet adjacent. So, you notice an instant where the two feet are adjacent. So, I have I am supporting on one leg, this leg is off the ground and as it is swinging forward my feet are adjacent. And then as it is swinging forward my tibia there is in the green leg I notice that my tibia starts extending right, it is it is preparing for the next initial contact as it is swinging forward. So, there is an instant where the tibia is vertical and then my knee starts extending to make the next initial contact. Okay. So, this is one gait cycle you are looking at both the limbs you have so, if you look at the gait cycle, the initial contact, heel rise, toe off, feet adjacent, tibia vertical and the next initial, these are all with respect to the limb that you are observing. Okay. Two events opposite toe off and opposite initial contact, that is for the contralateral limb that you are observing those events. Okay. So, these two let me in fact put them in a different. So, opposite toe off and opposite initial contact. Okay. This is a gauge cycle and this is something you should be able to reproduce. Okay. You should know what these various events are, you should be able to draw these diagrams do not tell me I did not warn you. Okay. This is something you because this is something we will revisit again and again and again. Okay. So, it is very important that you become familiar with these terms and that you learn to reproduce this diagram. Okay. Now, the phases. Okay. So, you have initial contact the time between initial contact and opposite toe off that is when you are doing the weight acceptance that is called loading response. Okay. So, if you look here okay, that is when the weight accept acceptance starts with the event of initial contact and continues over that phase of loading response. So, loading response is the phase between initial contact and opposite toe off. Okay. The time between these phases are not equal, okay. it is not equal, but it is just represented in this manner for clarity. So, loading response is the phase between initial contact and the opposite toe off. Okay. So, it is the double support phase essentially, the first double support phase is when the loading uh, corresponds to the loading response phase. Then you have mid stance and terminal stance. 
which correspond to and also pre swing. So, mid stance and terminal stance are when you have single limb support. Okay, the, the limb of interest is doing all the supporting, the supporting function is done entirely by one limb. And you notice at the end of terminal stance opposite initial contact takes place. Okay, so, a single support ends. So, when opposite toe off, opposite initial contact, that means that limb is in swing, it is lifted off the ground, toe off. So, the blue limb is in swing during the time that the green limb is in single support. So, in the single support phase, you have mid stance and terminal stance, and then pre swing is between the time now you have made opposite initial contact. Okay. So, pre swing is not a part of single support. Okay. So, pre swing is your second double support phase. So, initial double support phase is loading response second double support is you are making is a loading response for the other leg which corresponds to pre swing of this leg. Okay. So, in pre swing, pre swing is between the time there is opposite initial contact and toe off of this leg. Okay. Now, this leg is in swing this leg is in swing. So, you have the initial swing is when it lifts up off the ground actually goes back a little bit and then starts moving forward. Okay. So, that is your initial swing and that initial swing is till the time it goes it lifts off the ground and then comes back such that the feet are adjacent. So, that is your initial swing period. Then mid swing is when it moves forward now. So, if you look here you have initial swing. So, there the limb is advancing it moves forward. So, here you have the feet are adjacent now the tibia has become vertical. So, you see here from this configuration it is moved forward such that the tibia is now moving further forward such that it is vertical. So, that becomes mid swing and then from this point on now you have to prepare for the next initial contact. Okay. In these three the limb is off the ground, the green limb is not making contact with the ground, it corresponds to the swing phase of this leg. Okay. If you look at the blue it is sort of the, the this whole thing is sort of offset for the blue leg. Okay. So, terminal swing ends when you make initial contact or final contact which would be initial contact for the next gait cycle, initial contact for next gait cycle. So, this is a repetitive mechanism we use alternating between the legs to move the center of mass of the whole body forward. And you can see predominantly it is this coordinated movement you know things have to happen. So, it requires a lot of neural control it is not an easy task walking although it appears that way is not an easy task because it requires a lot of coordination between the muscles. We have not even started looking at imagine if you take two sticks or four sticks you know uh, assume the foot is you, you build a model like this like the stick diagram I have here. What are the chances that you can make it walk? That will give you an appreciation of the control it requires to make these coordinated movements. Now, I can make a stick figure like that, but can I make it move in this coordinated fashion? 
okay. So, that is that is where the challenges in uh, walking the coordinated set of movements you know with so many limbs connected by joints because imagine you have a joint here look at this leg the other leg is lifted off the ground I have two sticks like this right and I am trying to support the entire body weight on that requires a lot of muscular control. We will look at what are some of the key muscles that are involved in walking as we go along. Okay. But this is very important knowing the gait cycle, what are the events, what are the phases. So, this is something you have to be very become very comfortable with because I will not be going back and try you know. So, if I just say pre swing or if I just say opposite toe off you should be able to visualize what it is that I am talking about. So, this is this is a picture you have to commit to your memory in order to and these terms also you have to become very comfortable with double support single support. So, it should give you a picture when I when I talk about that you should be able to connect it to what I am talking about in the gait cycle. Again knowing which is stance, which is swing you know the same thing in a different manner. You have double support, right single support, double support, left single support. So, in a gait cycle each leg participates in one single support and two double supports. Okay, each leg if you look at each leg it participates in. So, the right single support is from left toe off to left initial contact that is your right single support. Right single support corresponds to the left swing face. Okay. Left single support right swing corresponds to left single support. So, those two overlap when one leg is in single support it means the other leg is in swing okay. and stance includes the double support phases. When I say the limb is in stance so that is why that is 60 percent. So, you have 60 percent stance phase 60 per 40 percent swing phase if you look at the leg because the leg participates in both the double support phases. 40 plus 10 plus 10 yeah from initial contact to toe off is your stance it is not single stance initial contact to the time it lifts off the ground is the entire stance phase it includes two double support phases okay the initial double support and the final double support. which one initial. no no initial contact to toe off of this that leg right initial contact to right toe off. What you are talking about is left initial contact to right toe off ok get get the picture in your head it is a little tricky which is why I am going slowly because it takes time to uh, absorb this. Okay. So, let me just write down some of this um, okay, we will start off with that initial contact loading response many times these are abbreviated. So, L R would be your loading response this is the initial double support period D S double support when the limb is 
accepting the weight. Mid stance first phase of single support. So, here the body advances over the supporting limb. and moves ahead of the stance limb as weight is transferred to the forefoot. Forefoot implies the front part of the foot. So, if you look here, mid stance is you have this limb being the only supporting limb because toe off of the other leg has happened. Now, the entire body moves over this. You can see here this configuration to this configuration. The body has essentially moved over this limb, moved over like this over this limb and the body weight has now moved to the forefoot. This is the only supporting limb, the other limb is off the ground. Okay. So, this is your mid stance transfer to the forefoot. Then the terminal stance is the last phase of single support and it ends with how does it end what event last phase it ends with opposite initial contact it ends with opposite initial contact good then pre swing is the second double support or the final double support period in preparation for and weight is shifted to the opposite limb. So, this corresponds to loading response for the other limb. Pre swing of this limb corresponds to loading. So, the same thing double support right pre, sp pre swing of one limb corresponds to L r of the other limb. Initial swing is the first third of the swing period And this is where the maximum knee flexion occurs. So, the leg swings back and then starts moving forward. Mid swing is the middle third of the swing period. Ends with a vertical tibia. The initial swing ends with feet 
adjacent. And the terminal swing where the final knee extension achieves the maximum step length. So, that is what and you are going to plant the foot. So, you have extended the knee fully so that you can place it for the next heel contact. So, it is the last third of swing knee extends to position for next initial contact ok and that ends the gait cycle. So, today we have looked at the key events in the gait cycle, the key phases in the eighth gait cycle. The phases are the times between two events ok and their uh, and their tasks. So, basically the task is support move forward, support move forward. So, when you are supporting also the body is moving forward ok there is continual forward progression that is happening during walking that is the purpose of walking.